check the mic and make sure it sound right. Hi, I'm DK Will. This is DK Will Talk About It, and I'm going to do a very brief video here on a significant development for those of us who are wrapped up into the XRP SCC debacle, and that is the fact that the library lost. And they put a tweet out here today, um, probably a couple hours ago from now when I'm doing this, which is around uh, noon in the Central Standard Time. They say, we're going to lick our wounds for a little bit, but we're not giving up. Well, we have to wonder, is that going to have any implications on the XRP results? And they have a link to the decision, which is here. I will put the uh, link in the description for, I'm sure, a lot of those uh, lawyers already involved in the XR community are going to review this. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, but the information is there for all of us to read. Uh, just getting cutting to the chase before I go through anything else. Here's the conclusion. The judge says, as I have explained, the only issues raised by the parties cross motions for summary judgment or where the library offered LBC as a security, and whether library received fair notice that it needed to register its offerings, because no reasonable trier of fact could reject the SEC's contention that library offered LBC as a security, and library does not have a triable defense that it lacked fair notice, the SEC is entitled to judgment. The SEC's motion for summary judgment is granted, and Library's motion for summary judgment is denied. The clerk shall schedule a status conference to discuss the process for resolving any remaining issues. The Honorable U.S. District Judge Paul J. Barbadoro today. So there we have it, folks. Um, as they mentioned, Library has lost. And just let's peruse a little bit just to pick a few things out that I think are relevant to consider in the XRP case. But of course, I'd be looking for attorney's views rather than mine on that one. I'm just sharing the news. And the news is library loss. And in looking at some of the similarities to the XRP case, mm -hmm. and, uh, on page four of this, the link will be in the description for the decision, but on page four um, of the decision, um, first let me say I think this is a, an orchestrated effort to motivate XRP holders to bail. Let me get that out first. But let's go. It says here, to date the company has spent approximately half of its free mind LBC through various transactions. Sounds very XRP-like, free mind. Uh, library assigned two million of its pre-mined LBC to Pillar to extend the company's debt financing. A little different than XRP um, allocating. I mean, excuse me, Ripple out of allocating XRP for um, designing and, and implementing the platform, but still, nonetheless, here's an, an allocation or assignment of some of the coins to a, another party for some company goal. Relatively similar, not exactly but similar. It sold 1.7 to three other entities. Yeah, that probably is similar. Um, a company that identifies, acquires, and stores cryptographic assets for investment clubs and a pair of online trading platforms, Shapeshift and CoinEx. It goes on to say it sold more than 9.8 million LBC to the public directly through library applications and another 44.1 million LBC through various digital asset trading platforms. Here we're looking at the similarities to XRP and Ripple. I will leave that up to your subjective thoughts and objective thoughts. And if I have a little commentary, I'll put it out there, but th this is the information, folks. And it used more than 142 million LBC to incentivize users, software developers, and software testers as well as compensate employees and contractors. So you decide for yourself the similarities between them and Ripple and XRP. I see some similarities, but at the same time, I also see what I believe is an effort to um, discourage uh, XRP holders and the XRP army. Uh, 
uh, talks about the standard of review. And this may be something referred to now because a decision has been meted out. It may be something referred to in the um, XRP case as well. But I'm going to give a potential uh, strategy and development that we want to consider in this in this area. Um, number one, it's no secret that they said that XRP is not designed for public consumption. It truly is a, the banker's coin. Um, but to get a market, they needed to have the noise, and we are the noise, us retail holders. In the meantime, uh, they've been holding the price down and depressing it, and while they act like institutions are not involved, institutions are involved, and institutions are scooping them up. So those are some realities that we have to accept in this scenario. Let's go on here. Here is another part that I wanted to cover. It says the first circuit court has broken the Howey test into three parts. Now, when you read this on page eight, you see it says into three parts, and then it defines the three parts when we've all known that there were four parts. But this kind of gives a reason to why they say three parts, because one part is the investment of money, two is in a common enterprise, and three with an expectation of profits to be derived solely from the efforts of the promoter or a third party. Okay, so that seems like a discrepancy until you actually look at the four prongs of the um, Howey test. And what are the four elements of the Howey test? An investment of money. So we have, number one, in a common enterprise. So we have, number two, and then it says with expectations of profit. So we have, with an expectation of profit, number three. But here's number four. When you look here, it says to be derived from the efforts of others. The purpose of this prong is to separate the investor from the third party. And here we have here to be derived solely from the efforts of the promoter or third party. So while it says a three part test, it's not being deceptive per se because it does have all four prongs in this determination, in this judgment, in this case. And so I wanted to highlight that as well. I have another development that I think I'll share in a different video. I'm going to make these videos short because y'all don't watch them anyway throughout. <laughs> Hope you do. If you like, uh, put the button down and say you like it and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, but right now, the news is that the library determination has been made. And at this point, DK Wills kind of kind of step out and that the lawyers are going to pick it apart. Now, let's see what they have to say about it. What I see is an effort to um, get you to come loose. Now, here's why I say that, because give this a thought. What if a um, settlement is already getting penciled in and then inked in? What if a settlement has already been arrived to, and that's the reason now they're releasing this library determinate uh, decision to better shake loose XRP holders of their coins? Um, let's not trust <laughs> the players in this. Quite honestly, let's not trust Ripple or at the SEC because it's clear that they stated that it's not designed for the public and the SEC clearly doesn't care about us um, because they're supposed to represent us and you know they wiped out billions from our pocketbooks collectively so the determ this decision is out uh, it's 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 a um, it's a threshold moment for those who own XRP and you have to decide if you're going to hold on to it or not. Now, the next video I do after this one, I'll try to tie in my thinking on both to show why when you believe in an investment, sometimes you have to have go through the gut-wrenching roller coaster to benefit from it. And this may be one of those times. So that's all I have to say on that matter. I'm DK Will. This is DK Will Talk About It. And I've talked about it. Have a wonderful day. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right.